Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shannon with King Family Farm, and uh, welcome to my kitchen. So, around the holidays, I mean, I do this all year round, but around the holidays, we tend to give gifts that are um, consumable. And so, one of the things I like to make for people is bacon. So today, we're making bacon. So I picked up, I picked up a couple of pork bellies. And if you've got your own pigs, that's great. If you don't, go see your local butcher, go wherever is most convenient for you, pick up a pork belly. I promise you, this is gonna be really good bacon, so much better than the little packs you buy at the store that used to be a pound but aren't a pound anymore, um, and shrivel up to nothing in the pan, and all you're left with is a pan of grease. This doesn't shrink in the pan when you cook it. So there's a couple of principles around making bacon. So what I have here is a pork belly, and this one is 11 pounds. And this is one side of it, and then this is the fat side of it. And what you want to make sure that you're getting is a pork belly that is rind removed, which means that there's no skin on it, it's been trimmed. Um, ask your butcher to do that for you if you don't want to do it yourself. I usually just buy it all trimmed ready to go. We don't have our own pigs, so this is what we do. Um, it started as an experiment with my dad and I, who we love bacon, um, and we just really dislike bad store-bought bacon that always smells just a little rancid to me these days. I don't know why, but it seems to. So we've got the pork belly, and then what we need to dry cure it, which is what we're going to do. We're going to do a dry cure instead of a wet cure. So rather than put it in a brine, which is liquid, we're going to dry cure this with salt and sugar and some spices. So this is the sugar I'm going to use. If you only have white sugar, use white sugar. If you have, this is organic cane sugar, use organic cane sugar. Um, I'm doing two pork bellies today. So this one is going to be all of the organic cane sugar and the smaller one I'm doing, I have a bit of uh, local organic maple sugar. This is from La Cabane, and uh, she's got some great products. And this is one of them. So I've used half and half this, which is maple sugar, and half organic uh, cane sugar. And I think it's going to make really good bacon. So that one's a bit of an experiment. But basically, you need sugar. Um, and your other main ingredient is salt. And I use sea salt. Essentially, you could use kosher salt. Essentially what you want is a coarse salt like that um, that doesn't have any additives in it. You don't want it to already have um, anti-caking agents in it. You don't want it to have anything else in it. So sea salt, look at the package. Um, I just, I emptied the package into this little peanut butter jar. Uh, what you're looking for is just plain salt. It shouldn't say anything else on the label. It should only say sea salt. Um, if you have canning salt, same thing. Uh, what it doesn't have is the anti-caking agents in it that would cause cloudiness when you're doing canning. You just want plain salt. So those are your two main ingredients, salt and sugar. And then from there, you can add some spices and some flavor. I'm going to smoke this. So I'm not going to add liquid smoke at this stage. If you don't have a smoker, don't despair. You can get liquid smoke, usually found in your spice aisle at the grocery store, um, outfitters and outdoor outfitters and things like that. And you can absolutely cook this in an oven. There, you don't have to have a smoker. We happen to have one, so that's what we're going to do, but you can make really delicious bacon in your oven. There's no reason to go out and spend the money or build one. Try it first, make sure you like it before you take the time to get, you know, to put together a smoker. So I'm going to do, I've got salt and sugar. The ones that I like, we tend to like a sweeter bacon. So I put nutmeg in mine, and I know that sounds really weird. Um, but I use whole nutmeg and I buy just like that 
And then I use a microplane, which I have right here. I'll just put this up so you can see. And I just grate it down, whoop, and then I throw it away. That hit the floor so it can stay there. Because my kids have been wandering in the house and they just wander right through in their boots, snow and all, it's great. So, and I just grate this. And I don't worry if I end up with a little bit extra, because I'm just gonna put it on that eggnog. It's fantastic. So I use a little, I use nutmeg and smoked paprika. I love smoked paprika. I love the smell of it, I love the flavor. That's what I use. And black pepper. I keep this really simple. Not a lot of fancy ingredients. You don't need all this weird, obscure stuff. But that's what we're going to use. Now, I pre-mixed all this before I started um, because I didn't want to make a mistake because this is done by the pound. So this is an 11 pound pork belly. I also have a 7.7 .7 pound pork belly. I'm in Canada, so they're sold by the kilogram, but the recipe I have is by the pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this. Don't worry about having to write anything down in the show notes down below. I'm going to put down how much of different things, how much salt, how much sugar, and then recommendations for all your different spices that you can use. You can use bay leaves, you can use garlic, you can use maple syrup, you can use coffee. There's all kinds of different things you can use. And I'll put that in the show notes as a per pound recipe. So that when you buy your pork belly and say you want to do a small one, you want to try it, then it will be, you just, if you end up with a three pound pork belly, you just triple the amount and you'll be good to go, okay? So I'm trying to make that really simple. This is a meat lug that I purchased at uh, Princess Auto. And they come on sale every once in a while. It's a really good price. They also have lids for them, which I haven't purchased yet, but I'm about to because I really like using them for this type of thing. When we mix up a lot of meat, you can do it right in, grind it right into this. You can grind your tomatoes when you're doing canning right in, pardon me, right into one of these. I love them. So I think I'm going to get lids. Today I'm just going to cover it in cellophane. So you want to unpackage your pork belly, pat it dry, and then you're going to mix up all your ingredients. And this is the amount that I've mixed up for this one. And it's the coarse salt. It smells so good. Coarse salt, sugar, uh, nutmeg, pepper, and smoked pe paprika. I have tried adding other things. My family doesn't like it, so this is what we use. And I don't use liquid smoke because I have a smoker. And uh, when we get to that stage, I will show you how I do that. So what you want to make sure that you do is you use about half of it per side. And you're going to rub it in really, really, really well so that you get into all the crevices. So I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll show you how I get it right into all the crevices and, and make that all done. You could wear gloves for this. I never do, because um, I always forget about them. So I'm just gonna move the camera. Okay, that was a little more complicated than I had planned. Um, this tripod just came in the mail, so I haven't really played with it too much. So we're gonna use about half of this, and I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top. And then what we wanna do is just rub it in. And you want to, don't worry about it getting in the, on the, on, in the container, that's fine. But you just want to rub it in. Make sure that you get into any crevices right here. So you lift up and move the meat around. If you're squeamish, wear gloves. It's okay. So we just want to make sure we try and get this as even as we can. Um, that looks pretty good. We'll flip it over. Take the other half. Put it on. So here we've got a little piece kind of off to the side. And we're just going to rub that in and this just smells so good 
So we're going to put this, after we get this all rubbed in, we're gonna cover it up. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm going to order, <laughs> when I'm done this, I'm gonna order the lids for these meat loves because I'm kind of tired of using cellophane and uh, which is doesn't stick very well to these containers and I try not to use just instantly disposable stuff so just get this nicely rubbed in so we're going to cover this up when we're done and we're going to put it in the fridge and we're going to leave it in the fridge for five to ten days and that really depends on how thick the meat is, um, how much fat. But what you're looking for is you're going to check this every day. You're going to go to the fridge and you're going to take it out of the fridge and you're going to flip it over. And what you're looking for for this to be done is you want a nice, right now it's squishy, like I can put my, I can leave fingerprints in this. When this has taken on the cure there's going to be a lot of liquid in and around the sides and what we're looking for is a nice firm feel to it there we go so this one is done i try and get the excess off my hands and onto the meat because we don't want to waste flavor and spices again you could wear gloves probably work better I just never think of it. So that's that one. And then I have this smaller one. And it has all of the same flavors in it, so I'm not gonna wash my hands in between, um, except that I've added maple syrup, or sorry, maple sugar. So it's a slightly different color, but other than that, everything else is the same. So again, half the sugar, salt mixture, and we're going to rub this in. Now, if you don't have these containers, don't go out buying them. You can cut your pork belly in half. Just cut it in half. And you could um, put this in like a 9 by 13 pan. Particularly, this, this is not a huge piece. This one is only 7 pounds. So, not quite 8. So it, it would fit nicely in, in like a 9 by 13 pan and a couple of them. And you can do that. Just, you know, be sure what I would do is I would coat it all and then I would cut it in half and separate it into the containers to make sure that you've got a nice, even... See how this is squishy? This won't be squishy. And this one, because it's thinner, it's not as big, it won't, I don't think it's going to take as long. I usually tend to leave mine for about seven days. So it works really well for us. So you're going to go down. Well, I'm going to go down because that's where my extra fridge is. I'm going to go downstairs every day and flip this and make sure that it gets a nice, even brine. And uh, I'm going to try and get some on the sides here too. So we're going to get a nice flavor on this. I can smell the maple in this. It's not super strong. Um, but I really think it's, it's going to taste really good. I'm trying to make sure I'm not knocking the camera there. All right. That looks quite good. So that's it, guys. So that's all you got to do with this. We're going to flip it every every day i'm probably going to do seven days but it's really going to depend you're looking for a nice firm meat so i'll um i think what i'm going to do is i will show you what it looks like when you've got to that point and uh i think we'll do a second video of when we've got to that point and what we do at that stage so because what we're going to do is whatever cure is left on this we're going to wash it off pat it dry, and then we're going to put these back in the fridge um, to without a cover on it. And all the modern fridges are frost-free, so what they do is they dry out the outside of the piece of meat, and that's what you want to happen. And then I'm going to put it in the smoker, or if you don't have a smoker and you want to do it with um, a uh, 
if you want to do it in the oven, you can absolutely do this in the oven. Now, I would have added uh, liquid smoke if I was going to do this in the oven. Um, and I think that that probably has a per pound uh, ratio on it for how much to use to give you that nice smoky flavor that we like with bacon. So if you're looking to make this before Christmas, um, you've still got time. So I'm going to put this part of it up because you can do this. And then I'll make the second video quickly about what to do to smoke it or cook it because we're today is the 14th of December. So you've got 10 days. I think you've got time to do this. Um, of course, it depends on what's going on. But if you want this for Christmas, you've definitely got time to do this before New Year's. So I'm, I'm going to do this in two videos. That's what I'm going to do. So just try and get some of this off my hands. And uh, that's it, guys. So we're just covering this back up. And... Yeah, I'm definitely buying the lids for this because this annoys me every time I do it. And then my frugalness makes me not buy the lids. And uh, I should just buy the lids. I always go, oh, I don't need them till next time. Well, it's next time and I still don't have them. So I think I'm just going to buy them and, uh, and use them. I think I'm going to end up, I'll probably end up smoking this. Today is Wednesday. This will probably end up getting smoked on the 20, 23rd. And then it'll sit overnight in the fridge until the 25th. And what that'll do is it'll allow it, the flavors to set. And then we'll, uh, we'll pack it up. And now this doesn't have any uh, sodium nitrate in it. It doesn't have any pink curing salt of any kind. Um, so we freeze this. Um, I'm just, there's other recipes out there that, that have, um, have the, the prog powder in it, have the curing salts. It's just this is a recipe we like. doesn't have that in it. Um, I know lots of people trying to move away from that. And so this doesn't have anything in it that it is a nitrate or a nitrite. Um, it doesn't even have celery juice. And celery juice is the same as, it's not quite the same, but it works the same as a nitrate. And, uh, and that's what you find in, in nitrate-free bacon at the stores. It'll say celery juice, but it really is, that's what it is. It's a nitrate. So we'll put this downstairs in the fridge and uh, yeah, and we're, I'm going to turn it every day, and we'll revisit this in probably seven days, and I'll do a part two video of what to do from there, and uh, so thanks for joining me today. Uh, thanks for coming into my kitchen, and uh, we'll see you next time here on the farm.